I mean, this video here, I'll be teaching you guys what a HVLP, LVLP, and conventional spray gun is. I'll be demonstrating up here on the wall how they spray and the differences between them. So I'll start off by giving you guys a quick look at the actual air cap themselves, and I'll tell you what the difference between these caps is. So starting off with the uh, LVLP, so that's the TE10. If you look at these holes here on the side, they're a lot smaller than the next one, which is the conventional air cap, TE20. So you look at those two next to each other, the holes on this are bigger than that. So LVLP, conventional, and next up in line is HVLP. So if you put them all together like that, you can actually see the step up in the size from those three air caps. So smaller here, slightly bigger, and then a fair bit bigger for the high volume, low pressure gun there. So I'll put the HVLP air cap onto my Wilbur's GCI Pro. Now, some of these air caps, uh, to obviously a lot of you people, it won't make any sense, all the numbers and stuff like that, so I don't expect you guys to understand that. Just wanted to explain to you guys that what makes a HVLP gun a HVLP gun is the size of the holes where the air comes out. So basically we can keep this uh, 1.3mm fluid tip here where the, the paint comes down here. When you pull that trigger, you pull the trigger in and it allows the paint to come out here. You can just, by changing these air caps, and the sizes of the holes in these air caps is greatly going to change how the gun sprays itself. So we'll start off with HVLP, high volume, low pressure, which basically means there's a high volume of air passing through that. Because of those holes are such bigger than the conventional and the low volume, the, 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 the size of those holes are so much bigger, so you need a higher volume of air and behind that air is going to follow the paint. So the paint's obviously going to follow where the air comes out. So um, look, for a long time it didn't really make that much sense to me, HVLP, because um, I find that you actually have to use a higher pressure with a HVLP gun to get any decent results. Um, if you were just looking at just getting a fluid onto a panel and you don't care what your finish looks like, well then, by all means, it is high volume, low pressure, but as far as actually getting these guns to spray properly, I'd say they're more high volume, high pressure. So, um, and you guys will be able to see the pressure settings that I need to get a half decent finish. So I'm just using a bit of black base coat here. Um, I would have liked to have used my Pro Light as well, but I only like to use clear coat in that, and um, I don't really feel like putting any color in that at the moment. So, here we go, I'll turn, the, I'll turn the, the fan on in my spray booth, put my respirator on, and we'll go over and have a look at how they spray. Okay, so before we actually start painting, uh, there's a few things that we want to think about. We've got to think about how we set this gun up. So we've got distance from the panel, we've got to think about distance from the panel, fan settings, fluid settings, air pressure settings. So distance from the panel is one fist away. Now if you would like to actually measure that, that is going to be about 10 centimeters right there, you can see. So that's about, an average fist is about say nine to 10 centimeters, you can see there. Um, and then uh, pressure settings, the base coat, which is what I'm using here. There's no need to go much above sort of uh, 1.2 bars, which is about 18 or so PSI. Um, I'd like to mention the temperature of your day is going to greatly change the air pressure. This is something that I noticed fairly recently um, because I usually paint by feel. I usually just pull the gun. I'll know where I need to have that pressure to get the, the panel to look the way I want. And if it's not right, you can just adjust up and down. These regulators, I really more use them to regulate the air pressure to stop fluctuations, more so than using the actual gauge to see exactly where the pressure is set. Although when you're learning, it can be uh, a good idea to have a look at the gauge and just sort of uh, get some uh, consistent results and leave it at a set pressure. Um, but as I say, it's gonna change. The weather is hotter, 
pressure's actually going to come down. Uh, the weather's colder, the pressure's going to go up. There is a scientific reason for that. Type it into Google. I'll put a, uh, the link in the comment below in the uh, description of the video if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how air pressure and temperature uh, react with each other. But anyway, so next up we'll go to our fluid. So for base coat, I would usually just leave that fluid just right out. So that's only really hanging in by a couple of threads. And for these guns, most of the time, you just have that fan now right open. So you just have that wide open. Yep, that's, that's our thing. So now let's start having a bit of a spray around and see how it's gonna um, go onto the panel. So that there's a fist width away, one bar pressure. That's a pretty nice little fan there. That's about all you need. Um, if we jack that pressure, jack the pressure up a bit, one and a half bar. That's got to atomize a lot finer. So to me, that's probably more where you want, one point five bar. Yeah, that's getting the paint on there, but. As I said before, the lower pressure, it's just going to get it on there. Um, you're going to get a very orange peel and finish in it. And um, next up, we'll go to the conventional cap. So I'm actually using this cap here. It's a TE20 air cap. Um, and I'll be uh, using that on the next panel up here. So what you will notice is this gauge was set to 1.5 bar when I was using the HVLP air cap. And you watch this gauge jump up as I put this different air cap on. So without touching any of these settings here, this has already jumped up to 2 bar. Best way to explain what happened then is it's a little bit like everyone's played with the hose when they're a kid before, haven't they? You put your finger over the hose, the same, the same flow is coming out. You haven't even turned the tap up or down, but putting your finger over the hose is going to make a higher pressure, isn't it? That's basically what's happened by putting those smaller holes. So as I say, this HVLP is conventional. Slightly smaller holes here, the pressure's got to get higher, isn't it? So we'll actually need to turn that pressure back down a bit. Okay, so again, we'll start off our first spray at one bar, then we'll go at 1.5 and see how we look. Okay, so we're at 1.5. Now we'll jump up to 1.5. And next up, we'll go down to our low volume, low pressure cap. This one is TE10. So same thing, that was set at 1.5. I've got a good idea, it's going to jump right back up to 2 bar again. And it has. So, same thing, we'll go back down to 1 bar. Back up to 2 bar, 1.5. So the main thing I'm really noticing from the HVLP, the conventional to the low, low volume, low pressure, the main thing you notice is the width of the spray fan. So if we go right from the edge of the overspray to the edge of the overspray, you're looking at about 11 or 12 centimeters for that one. Uh, the higher pressure, it's going to actually narrow that fan in with the higher pressure. So you'd probably be saying you're looking at about 11 Next up, you've got your conventionals. So, 
So yeah, this is uh, definitely more narrow than the other one. Again, the higher pressure narrows that fan in again. You're sort of around the nine centimeters. And the low volume, low pressure, you, you're sort of coming well around the nine centimeters there. And higher pressure, you're sort of looking at about eight or something like that, so. Another look at that there.